Please come to order. Please come on in and take your seats. You ready, Sarah? Please take your seats. The Minutemen are going to be coming in. Whenever you're ready, sir. Please join them in singing the national anthem. Well, Rev, um, Lieutenant, Mr. Marr.
and uh, for bringing such a fine group of dedicated and enthusiastic public servants together tonight. My wife and I are very proud to be here one day. Please bow your heads with me and pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, help us as we give our individual and collective gifts to this community. Regularly refurbish our intentions that we may give of ourselves in ways that truly make a difference to our families, to our town, to our nation, and to a world that has grown so small it can be explored by the click of a mouse. Grant that we might keep our wits when we would otherwise be distracted. Help us to maintain our focus with determination and with a sense of humor born of the knowledge that we are but mortal men and women. Fuel our work with vigor, stamina, and a healthy spirit. For all of this and for a few doses of good luck and grace, we make these requests and give our thanks to you, O oh Lord. Amen. 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 Monotomy, left face. Forward, march. Thank you, Tim Lottie, Minute Minute, Lieutenant Harper. <coughs> Harper. Good evening. Welcome to Arlington's 2012 annual town meeting, our 205th town meeting, our first being in 1807. And this is our 85th representative town meeting, the first in 1937. I first of all want to um, welcome our new selectmen, Mr. Dunn. Not Mr. Dunn, Mr. Curl and Mr. Byrne, and our new town manager, Adam Chapdelaine. <clears throat> Here in town meeting, we follow our town bylaws for the principles and rules, and the principles set out in town meeting time for guidance. If you would like a copy of town meeting time, please see me. They're $25 each. Give me a check made to the um, Mass Moderators Association, or I can direct you to their website where you can buy one online. Anyone wishing to speak at town meeting, I ask them to be brief. Out of consideration to other town meeting members so that everyone speaking has adequate time to speak. In order to be fair to all members, I ask that you not try and get on the list for a second time until it appears everyone else has had a time to speak you may be asked to answer a question, but that wouldn't count for your second time up. And please, heed, heed the advice of Mr. Doherty Andover's town meeting to moderator until the age of 90, who said, I don't have a formal time limit, but I did tell the meeting three minutes is about enough. After five, you put them to sleep. After seven, they'll vote against you even if they agree. I agree with this guy. Pursuant to our new bylaws passed last spring by the meeting, on matters requiring a two-third vote, the moderator can now can declare that vote immediately upon, um, the moderator can now declare a two-third spoken vote. If that's the case, I will do so by immediately declaring afterwards, I declare a two-third vote by majority. Ms. Lucarelli, do you certify 85 members are present in voting? This is the same procedure we used, used to use for um, um, majority vote. If, again, it stays, if five members do question the vote, they can stand up and we'll have a countered vote. Hopefully we won't have to do too many of those. That was the purpose of changing the bylaw. And once again, we have an email distribution list for town meeting members. So the new town meeting members or old ones. If you're not on the list, uh, you can get on that list by emailing 
well, it's too long to read out, but if you want to get on the list, it's on the letter I sent you that was in the selectman's package, or come up and see me at the break, I'll give it to you. Um, it's for distribution of materials such as the stuff you found on your chairs so that we can all have it in advance for preparation of the meeting. For the Newtown meeting members, what we vote on are, is not the warrant. The warrant is the warning to the town citizens what we are going to vote on. What we are voting on are the recommended votes in these reports that you received. The green ones, the orange ones, the um, ARBs, and we'll get a few other reports where it says voted. The word voted is what we actually vote on. Those through the magic of technology and Mr. Good are going to appear on the screen. So just the vote will be projected this year, not the actual Warren articles or any of the comments, because we don't vote on those comments. And finally, in regard to Article 73, Article 73 is a non-binding resolution. Um, I personally think that such resolutions are counterproductive as they can breed tension and even, even animosity and could spill over into other important town business. Another risk is that the discussion could be interminable since many folks may have strongly held convictions pro or con. The practice of debating and voting upon non-binding resolutions can also diminish the perception and reputation of town meeting and therefore its value and power. Please don't misunderstand, non-binding resolution resolutions have much to recommend. In that regard, in Article 73, I'm going to what I'm going to try this year, instead of allowing everybody to get up and speak, I'm going to suggest and try out that we're going to allow two speakers, one con and one pro, with 10 minutes each. I suggest that all those who are in favor of the article, at the break, meet over on the left side near the um, treasurer's office, and all who are against the article, meet over by the assessor's office, get together, pick out who your speaker is going to be, Put your best argument and your best speaker forward. And then on Article 73, we'll have the cons at one mic, the pros at the other. They'll speak, and then we'll debate. Again, these are non-binding resolution. So we will have a suggestion made, um, but we don't have to debate it forever. This is something new um, that we're going to try this year. We're going to see how it works on the non-binding. I'm going to remind you that the um, Arlington Boys Lacrosse has treats for us either before or during the break and if you'll go out and make them rich that would be wonderful that's it for my remarks now we had a whole lot of people re-elected or newly elected this year so why don't we have all the town meetings who were newly elected or re-elected please stand up You see up on the screen we have a little bit of a re revised um, oath of office. The Town Government Reorganization Committee came up with this revised oath of office and we're going to go forth with this. Please repeat after me putting your name in where the blank is. I, I pledge to attend all scheduled town meetings, to participate fully and evaluate fairly all matters before town meeting. Hey, where's our language, Dave? Oh, man, technology broke down already? Well, all right, just start again, follow me. I, I pledge, pledge to attend all scheduled town meetings, to participate fully and evaluate fairly all matters before town meeting, to vote in the best interest of the town with respect thereto, I support free and open speech and will treat others with mutual respect in spite of conflicting opinions. I pledge to conduct myself in a civil manner that is becoming of an elected town meeting member. I, now it's the same, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws, town management act, 
and the general laws of the Commonwealth, so help me God. Congratulations. I recognize the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is requested that the members of the Board of Selectmen, elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of the town and staff, superintendent of schools and staff, committees, commissions and boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and Superintendent, members of the General Court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted on by this meeting, and representative of, representatives of the news media be permitted to take my picture to sit within the town meeting enclosure. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Constable's return. Madam Clerk, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the Board of Selectmen and that the Constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws? She says yes. Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that if all of the business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of this evening, in case, when this meeting adjourns, may it adjourn, please, to Wednesday, April 25th, 2012, at 8 p.m. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Mr. Greeley, Article 2. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 2 is uh, the state of the town, and I am honored as uh, chairman of the Board of Selectmen to be allowed to present this state of the town. Um, and I, may I ask you first, Mr. Moderator, what the time limit is on this? Ten minutes. Uh, by a voice more? vote, could I uh, request 95 additional minutes? <laughs> Mr. All, Greeley's moving for nine minutes. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Aye. What a surprise. <laughs> I'll do my best as I time this out today. It was just like maybe 30 seconds beyond 10 minutes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, state of the town. First of all, what I would like to do is always at the beginning of these town meetings, uh, we do say goodbye to some who were with us here before, whose efforts make a huge difference and have made a huge difference in the state of the town. I've asked a few of them to be here tonight. Hold your applause if you would please, but I do think we owe them their thanks. They're moving on to different ways that they're gonna help the state of the town of Arlington, but they've retired from their primary positions, if you will. These individuals, I think, deserve a lot of the credit for the state that we are in today. I know he didn't show up because I asked him to, but please, Brian Sullivan, Mary Ellen Remert Loud, Clarissa Rowe, where's Clarissa? Uh, stand up, Annie LaCourt, Mary Ellen Remit Loud, stand up, Annie LaCourt, and Robert Greeley, Robert Greeley up in the uh, balcony, I believe. Uh, please give them all a nice round of applause. Whatever the state of our town, we're better because of all of them. Uh, so also another role that I have to do up here is to introduce to you your executive team, if you will, the uh, Board of Selectmen and the other very important member of our executive team, if you will, the uh, CEO of the town, our town manager. But I'd like to do that in a little bit of a unique way. I asked each one of them over the weekend to think about, would you please give me one sentence to describe the state of the town of Arlington. So I'm gonna give you the sentence, and I don't want you screaming out loud, but see if you can guess who said this sentence. We are financially more stable than we have been in decades. Our commitment to education is core to our town's values. Are we providing the best education that we can with the resources we've dedicated? In your own mind, you may guess. 
My honor to present to you Mr. Dan Dunn. Some of you were wrong. I know you were in terms of your guess. Who said this one? With Arlington's strong financial strength, we can now focus on economic development and smart growth for our town's future. Selectmen for all of one hour and 26 minutes, please welcome Mr. Stephen Byrne. Really longer than that, he was sworn in on election night, I think. Um, who said, having put the recent financial crisis and other controversies in our rearview mirror, Arlington is now poised to look toward the road ahead and engage in broad community planning and visioning around where we would like our town to go in the future. I believe I said silent, I'm not sure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe Curo. You can all scream this one out because I'm pretty sure you're going to get it. Who said, thanks to the sacrifice of our town employees who agreed to increase their health insurance costs by entering the GIC, the town has been able to extend its financial plan? Who said that? Diane. Ladies and gentlemen, Diane Mahan. And so there's one left on the executive team. I'm sure you can guess who said this one. Arlington is a vibrant and dynamic community that stands poised to be a leader among mass municipalities as being an exceedingly attractive place to call home. Our new town manager, Adam Chapdelaine. So I asked a few others. I asked my brother Bobby, those of you who know him, I said, Bob, how would you describe the state of the town of Arlington? He responded with a question, are you really going to be chairman again? <laughs> I answered proudly, yes. He said, the state of the town of Arlington is hopeless. Kind of sorry I got him that applause before, but, but I don't want to stop there. I want to do one more thing. I want to ask each one of you to think for a minute. I want you to think about this sentence. The state of the town of Arlington is blank. I want you each for a moment to think of what one word would you use to fill in that statement. The state of the town of Arlington is blank blank. Think about it for 10 seconds. And now tell your neighbor, everybody around this hall, you tell your neighbor what word you came up with. Up there, back here, or all, all the way around in front. Come on, tell your neighbors what word you came up with. Tell them. I'll call on you. I'll bring the microphone over to you. Okay, come on back to me. Mine was handsome leadership, but I know that's two words and that doesn't really count. But I would like a show of hands now. In terms of the one word that you chose to fill in that blank, the town of Arlington is blank. Show of hands, how many of you would say your word was a positive word? Show of hands. Thank you, okay, put them down. How many of you would say your word was a neutral word? word, show of hands, okay? And how many of you would say yours was a negative word, show of hands, okay? Within this hall, 260, 270, what do we got? 300 people with different views of the state of Arlington. Outside this door, we've got 43,000 who have a different opinion of the state of the town. 
the person who's just looking at the parking ticket they got because they were 20 minutes over the, over the uh, meter rate has a very different opinion. And that's the point, I believe, is that there are many different opinions. To me, the one word I really would use is exciting. I honestly feel we're at a very exciting moment here in the town of Arlington. For 100 years, people have gathered in this hall to talk about the state of the town as it exists and where we should go from here. It's not just the 100th anniversary of Fenway Park, and by the way, it's also the 100th anniversary of when 3,000 cherry blossoms were donated by the Japanese to Washington, D.C. We're on the threshold of the next 100 years. We've recently had a very hotly contested election. We have a new board of selectmen. We have a stable financial plan that may go as many as six years. We have renewal at Thompson, at Stratton, the Brigham's property, the Sims properties. We have thriving business and real, and, and real estate markets. New town manager, excellent management team, dedicated, talented employees, and each and every one of you who sit before us is what to me makes this a very exciting town. It changes daily. It's changed through history. I always find it so interesting. When my father served on the Board of Selectmen in the early 50s, when veterans, when the native sons and daughters returned from the war, this town gave them a plot of land and a job as a police, a fireman, or, for, or public works, because we wanted to keep them in this town. Can you imagine if we today could be so land rich or so fiscally rich that we could afford to do such a thing again? The state of the town changes. What makes the difference is how we behave during the state of that town. It is, it's never going to be stagnant. It's always going to change. It's never going to be perfect. We are not going to make every dog owner happy. We're not going to make every non-dog owner happy. We're not going to solve every parking issue. We're not going to stop speeding cars coming through Arlington as they race through our town and they don't even live within this community. Once we finish the renewal at Thompson and Stratton, we have to start all over again. The high school, the middle school, and back to the seven elementary schools. The state will continue to change. It's how we will conduct ourselves during that change. For me, this past week was a very special week. We had the election day, and again, I, I think it's just so wonderful how many did step up and run for office. Mary Ellen Remit Loud's uh, retirement celebration, the largest Patriots Day parade we've had in quite some time, a rousing welcome to Paul Revere by former chairman Clarissa Rowe and William Dawes, and I mean it, there was quite a crowd here thanks to that tourism committee and in partnership with uh, Bose Realty. For me and my family, the highlight of this past week was the Arlington Housing Authority naming the Brian R. Greeley Plaza that links the Cusick Terrace and our community safety building. And when, of course, I talk about family, I do get a little minor right up there, and they're the reason that I really care about the state of this town. My wife, Annie, right above the clock, my daughter, Katie, who's a freshman at Lesley University, and my son, Sean Patrick, who's a... Yeah. <laughs> Shy. Sean is the only one that stood up and waved, if you're wondering what happened up there. But it means a lot to me that they're here along with my brother, Bobby. Uh, on the plaque at that dedication, there was a quote that was written by my brother Brian, and the quote is, as sure as I am that there is a place in history for those who did great things with their lives, I am equally sure there is a place in heaven for those who did great things with their hearts. I am excited because throughout our history, today, with the team in place, with each and every one of you. I'm excited because I think Arlingtonians have done always great things with their lives and have always been guided by their hearts. 
May I conclude by saying for each one of us, whenever the end of our service comes, may it be said that we used our lives and we used our hearts to make the state of this town a better place than it was on the day we arrived. Thank you, God bless. Thank you, Mr. Green. One announcement, turn off your cell phones or put them on vibrate. If they ring, go outside and answer them. Thank you. Is there any other announcements or, re or resolutions? Mr. Smith. Dick Smith, Precinct 17. I'm the main uh, sponsor of Article 73, which the moderator has discussed at some length. It'll be interesting to see how that procedure works out. And if it works out well, that'll be a good, uh, something good to use for any such resolutions in the future. Uh, it also, his plan also an makes, pardon me? Is this an announcement or an argument? It's an, it's an announcement now. Okay. <laughs> Um, it's even more, my, what I want to announce is even more important now. An outside organization uh, is planning a comprehensive discussion of Citizens United either on the 14th or 16th of May. Uh, that's a t those are both town meeting nights. Uh, more information will be coming up about that. A second meeting exclusively, uh, not, uh, primarily, but not exclusively for town meeting members, will be on May 15th. We've got the uh, executive director of Common Cause and a couple state legislators that are gonna be discussing uh, the Citizens United case. If town meeting ends before the 15th, we'll probably move that up a week earlier. But in view of the uh, procedure that the town moderator has set up, there's gonna be limited time for discussion, so I think it's a good idea for town meeting members to try to at attend the, at least the session that we're setting up for, primarily for town meeting members. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Any other announcements or resolutions? Mr. Harrington. Thank you very much, Mr. Lamar. Okay. I'd just like to ask a quick moment. Name and precinct yeah. for the record. John Harrington, precinct 15. Sorry, I'm going this. I'd just like to ask for a quick moment of silence, if possible, for uh, former town meeting member, the late Kenny Markey. Seeing none at this time. Article, Article 3, reports of committees. Call for all reports that have not already been received, that will be ready to be received. Mr. Tosti, to report. Wish to report on the uh, Town Government Reorganization Committee. Uh, I move that the final report of the uh, town government be received. All in favor? Aye. Just very briefly, uh, you can read through the report yourself. Uh, we've gone through several areas. We've been meeting over three years just to highlight um, the town uh, human resource functions, we were aiming towards a consolidated human resource department. Uh, we didn't get all the way there for various reasons, but we did get made some important movements as far as uh, uh, encouraging the schools to have a human resource department, which they have not had for seven or eight years. Uh, it also, uh, the school committee voted to have a joint collective bargaining agent for both town and school, and the human resource uh, functions in both the town and the school are now working together under a memorandum of understanding. So it didn't go quite as far as we thought it might, uh, but I think it, uh, it, it's moved, uh, it's had made substantial improvements 
Uh, several people worked very hard in this, including John Billiford, former treasurer, uh, and several other members of the staff. I think most of the rest you could go through yourself. Uh, William just mentioned the uh, public access financial report, which you got your first copy of last June. That'll be going out every year. It's a four-pager on the status of financial status of the town. Uh, that's been worked very hard by Treasurer Stephen Gilligan uh, and the town manager, Adam Chaplain, and uh, look forward to seeing that every year to try to get this information out to the public. Uh, the rest of the report I think you could read yourself and I'll make a few comments when we get to two articles uh, that will be coming up later in this town meeting. I'd like to thank all of the members for their hard work. I'd especially like to thank Ted Peluso. Uh, he took the minutes over three years of our work and his constant encouragement, sometimes of uh, near nagging, <laughs> that we could do more and uh, pushed us to do more. And we appreciate that, even though not quite all the time. Uh, thank you very much and appreciate your support. Thank you, Mr. Tosti. Any other reports? Um, gentleman in the back. Also, in the back of the room is the annual report. You should all pick one up. There's a big box by Ms. Weaver. Um, these are our town report, and we got them on the first night of town meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Chapdelaine, and your department for getting that to us. <laughs> Mr. Doherty. Good evening. Jim Doherty, Precinct 2. <clears throat> member of the um, Zoning Bylaw Review Committee. I will not uh, read the whole report to you. However, there are copies in the back of the hall. The one thing I would like to point out, um, this committee calls for 10 members in total for the last two years of which I have been on the committee. We have um, <coughs> floated between four and five members. We would like to see more. Moderator appoints the members. And if anyone is interested, we welcome you to uh, seek a position on this committee through the town moderator. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. If you were interested, please see me at some point during the meeting. Uh, Mr. Fitzsimmons? Oh, anyone second? All in favor of receiving the report of the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee, say aye. Aye. Opposed? So received. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, on behalf of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, I'm requesting that the report uh, of the board... Bruce, introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Bruce Fitzsimmons, Chairman of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. And on behalf of the board, I am requesting that the chair receive the report of the Arlington Redevelopment Board to town meeting for uh, 2012. All in favor of receiving the report of the redevelopment board, please say yes. 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 Opposed? So received. Mr. Tosti? I move that the report of the Finance Committee be received. All in favor of receiving the Finance Committee report, say yes. Yes. Opposed? It is so received. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'll be fairly brief. Uh, I think most of the Finance Committee report stands on its own. Uh, I would like to emphasize a couple of things, though. Uh, Proposition 2.5 override of last June. The legislation that allowed us to uh, do a great deal in uh, health insurance reform and some increases in local aid that we've gotten this year. Now, these things did not happen sort of miraculously or on their own. They all required a substantial amount of work by a great many people, and I think I'd like to thank them. The first people that I'd like to thank is the people who participated in the groundbreaking reform of the health insurance that allowed us to save substantial amounts of money this year. I'd like to thank our legislators, Representative Garbley, Representative Brownsberger, Representative Kate, uh, Kaufman, and Senator Donnelly, and also Governor uh, Deval Patrick, 
uh, who proposed the initial. This was a huge effort last year. Uh, these were very difficult votes for many of these reps, and yet they did it. They made it, and they made it happen. We needed to have it happen, and it's one of those things where never let a crisis, good crisis, uh, go wasted. Secondly, I'd like to thank the town manager and the board of selectmen. They moved to make sure these reforms happen immediately. The board of selectmen's meeting was called the day the governor signed the health insurance reform legislation. Uh, without that quick action, we would not have been able to move this quickly. I'd like to thank the town unions and their leadership for buckling down, negotiating with this in good faith, and getting the job done. Even though they were sacrificing places here, uh, they made the effort to get the job done. I'd like to thank the Human Resource Department, led by Karen Malloy. They did yeoman's work all last fall in implementing an entirely new health insurance plan uh, through another state agency. I'm sure they were up many nights to get this work done. It all had to be done at least a month earlier than usual, and they did great work on that. I'd like to thank all these people for getting this job done. Now, I had to write a whole bunch of new stuff in here because of uh, Mr. Greeley's report. You know, Dan Dunn used to be a good member of the Finance Committee. <laughs> he walked around with our cloud over your, his head. All Finance Committee people have these dark clouds over their head. You can't see them, but if you use the right light, it's there. <laughs> Goes over to the selectmen, immediately becomes optimistic. It's, it's, <laughs> It's like we don't, why we don't let them handle budgets. <laughs> the status of the town is pretty good. Uh, there are a few things that I worry about. That's why you pay me the big bucks to worry. <laughs> and uh, I guess the federal government deficit is one of the things to worry about. Because you know what happens when legislators try to solve budgetary problems. It all flows downhill. There is a tremendous amount of federal money that goes to our state, especially in the areas of Medicaid. And if they start cutting substantially on that to balance the federal budget, all those responsibilities go down to the state. As the state starts balancing and helping to fulfill their responsibilities to people, problems go down to the local level. So it's not like all problems have gone away. And I would want to read one phrase or a couple sentences in the middle of my report, the taxpayers stepped to the plate, pardon my baseball terminology, when we needed them last June. It is now our responsibility to step to the plate by limiting town spending, carefully monitoring our reserves so as to live within the limits of Proposition 2.5 as far into the future as possible. That will be the policy of the Finance Committee and I hope that will be your policy as well. So um, we still need to keep things tight. We still need to lim live within certain limits. We need to monitor our reserves well uh, because things can happen. I'd like to introduce the members of the Finance Committee. Uh, representative in Precinct 1 is Paul Baer. He's here. Representative in Precinct 2, Steve DeCourcy. Over here, Precinct 3 is myself. Uh, precinct 4 is Ryan Ferreira, back there. Precinct 5 is Mary Margaret Franklemont. I'm not sure if she's here today. Uh, precinct 6 is Arif Padera, brand new member of our committee. Precinct 7 is Joe Connors. Okay. Precinct 8 is Charlie Foskett, up at the head table. Precinct 9 is Brian Beck, one of our newer members. Uh, and a former Finance Committee member in another town. Uh, precinct 10 is Peter Howard. Oh, very well. Precinct 11 is Robert Bob Jenkins. Jenkins. Precinct 12 is Ken Simmons. In the back there. Uh, precinct 13 is John Deist in the middle. Uh, precinct 14, Alan Jones at the front table. Precinct 15 is Richard Fanning, also at the front. Precinct 16, another one of our new people, Carolyn White. Precinct 17 is Grant, Grant Gibeon, right there. Precinct 18 is Mary Ronan. Uh, 
Mary Ronan's not here today. She's been very sick. Uh, and between hospitals, we uh, all pray for her and hope that she'll be back joining us next year. Uh, this, I think it was last year at the age of 86, her family finally convinced her to stop downhill skiing in Aspen. <laughs> Show you what a tough lady she is. Uh, precinct 19 is Chris, uh, Christine Dessler over here. Precinct 20 is Dean Carmen. And Precinct 21, one of our new members, you've probably never heard of him before, Dave McKenna. <laughs> okay, I want to... If you have questions on any of the Finance Committee work, please ask them uh, or me, and we'll get the answers back as, as soon as possible. There's one more uh, Finance Committee member that uh, is missing. Um, this winter, we lost uh, one of our members, Erin Phelps. She uh, was a Finance Committee member through the 90s. Then in the early 2000s, she became a member of the Minuteman School Committee for many years. And then when one of our other members had retired, she took over and came back to the Finance Committee, finally leaving in 2011, in October. During this entire 20 years of service, she fought breast cancer, uh, tooth and nail, all the way down, never gave up. But finally, it got to her. So I wish to ask for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. <laughs> Any other reports or committees? Seeing none, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Kevin Greeley, Board of Selectmen, asks that the uh, uh, report of the Board of Selectmen please be received. All in favor, receiving the Board of Selectmen? Opposed? So received. Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My job now to introduce you to the team that really does the work and runs the town. Uh, you have so far met uh, most of the members up here at the head table, but let me introduce to you uh, the two women that really should be on my right, because they're my right hand, if you will. But our town council, Juliana Rice, and also, Juliana, please. Juliana, nice round of applause for you. <laughs> and we all know the mayor of the town of Arlington, Marie Kripelka. You know, Alan, doesn't it kill you when she gets bigger applause than we do up here each and every time? Uh, I don't, do we have the traveling mics? Yes. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, we, we do, have okay. We have them, but I'm not sure we have runners. Huh, okay, mm -hmm. then here's what I'm gonna do, because they hate me for this. They hate being introduced anyhow, but I'm gonna ask each member of the team, I see Ed will start over here, to come up and stand at this microphone, and in, an, in a nice loud voice, I wanna hear them introduce themselves the role that they play with the town of Arlington and how long they've been with us. Ed, you start it and then everybody come on up in the line afterwards. Let's go. The rest of you come on up right I'm after us. Come on, let's go. <laughs> you can hold your applause. Ed Marlega, legal department, uh, workers' compensation and litigation attorney. I've been here uh, 30 some odd years. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ryan Livergood. I'm the new library director. I've been here for well, I've been the new library director for about a week, but I've been here for about uh, eight months now. Thank you. I'm Christine Connolly. I'm the director of Health and Human Services, and I've been in Arlington for 12 years. Ruth Lewis, I'm Control, and I've been here 23 years. Can you feel their love? Can you feel how much they like the line right there? <laughs> Hi, I'm David Good. I'm the Chief Technology Officer, and I've uh, lived in town for about 25 years and have been a town meeting member for 10 years. Uh, Michael Byrne, Director of Inspectional Services. I've been with the town for 24 years. Do you know anybody special in this hall, sir? Nobody at all, sir. 
Joe Conley, I'm the Director of Recreation, and I've been here eight years. Barbara Jefferson, I like the fire department, been with the department for 29 years. Mr. Chief. Frederick Ryan, a proud uh, graduate of Arlington High School, 19, class of 1981, chief of police, uh, 13 years. How many years were you in high school, actually? <laughs> 13 years. <laughs> Uh, Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. I've been with the town for five years. I'm Karen Malloy. I'm the Personnel Director. I've been with the town 16 years. Thank you. And now, let's go over here. Come on, let me have, let me have Karen. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. John Spidell. I've been here for eight months. I'm the Director of Assessments. Sorry, John. Excuse me. <laughs> I understand things have greatly improved since you took over from my brother. <laughs> Is that true? Kev, is that true? Yeah. Please, Carol. Bruce, the whole board. I'm Carol Kowalski. I'm the Director of Planning and Community Development. I've lived in Arlington for 26 years, and I've worked for the town for two and a half years. I'm Bruce Fitzsimmons. Uh, I'm Chairman of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. I've lived in town for 22 years. I've been on the board for the past seven years. Mike Kerr, member of the Redevelopment Board for a little over a year, uh, member of town meeting for about seven years now. Chris Sapinski, member of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. I've lived in Arlington for nine years and been on the board for one year. Andy West, I'm co-chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. I've lived here for my uh, youngest daughter's age, 18, and been on the board for nine years. Uh, members of the school committee, come forward, please introduce yourself. First, our chair. Kiersey Allison Ampey, chair. Um, I've been on the school committee two years now. Cindy Starks, outgoing chair, newly reelected. I've been on the school committee three years. Leba Hyam, secretary. I've been on school committee four years and town meeting member for three. Judson Pierce, Arlington School Committee for two years, vice chair. Jeff Thielman, I've been on the school committee since 2003. Who am I missing? Yes, Please. yes. Bill Hainer, uh, member of the school committee one year and the newest and oldest. <laughs> Bill, your, your podium was over here, by the way. So, uh, You met earlier Jimmy Doherty, who is one of our elected members of the Board of Assessors. Up here in the front, we have Mr. Kevin Feely, who is also an elected member of the Board of, of Assessors. Is Mary here, Kev? Mary Wynn Stanley? Mary was here. OK. She was here earlier. Uh, how about do we have the members from the Zoning Board with us tonight? OK. Uh, who hasn't been introduced yet? Well, talk, introduce yourself to your neighbor. Ms. Lucarelli, town clerk. Oh, sorry, yes, let's go up here, excuse me. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> Mr. Gilligan, town treasurer. Yep. There are two others that I most certainly should introduce, a former member of the Board of Selectmen and our current treasurer, Mr. Stephen Gilligan. Stephen, excuse me. And in the back corner, our excellent senator, Mr. Ken Donnelly. Ken, nice to see you. <laughs> There's more, but just pay attention. Thank you, all. This brings up another point. If you have any questions of any of the department heads, board members, or anybody else, please bring it up with them beforehand so they can have an answer for you at the next night's town meeting. We don't want to ambush them with unfair questions, but every question is a good one, and they'll have an answer at the next night if we ask them beforehand. Um, any other reports? Seeing none. Mr. Tosti? Thank you, Mr. Greeley. I move that the recommended votes contained in the respective reports 
of the Finance Committee, Board of Selectmen, Redevelopment Board, and other committees be before the meeting without further motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All the recommended votes are now before the meeting. They don't need a second. Thank you. Mr. Tosti? Move that Article 3 will be laid upon the table. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Article 3 is upon the table. That brings up Article 4. Appointment of measures from Wooden Bark. This is a colonial era position. I call on Mr. McCabe. Mr. Moderator, Harry McCabe, Precinct 21. Uh, an observation first. Uh, my understanding is that Chapter 39, I don't remember the section, the town council might help us, is very clear. And it says that the town meeting may not begin until we have received the town report. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, it's Article 4, I'd like to nominate uh, Mrs. Elsie Fiore, 51-year uh, member of the town meeting, for the appointment to the measure of wooden bark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I direct the clerk to appoint Ms. Fiore, measure of wooden bark. Yes, yeah, she has agreed to serve. I told her what a cord of wood is. <laughs> Mr. Moderator? Yes. Uh, the, the current uh, measure of wooden bark, uh, Mr. John Fitzmaurice, uh, long-serving uh, uh, servant of the town, has uh, indicated that he wished to retire. Uh, this as is I correct. understand it, uh, retire from the position of measure of wooden bark. My understanding is that the appointment becomes effective, the appointment of Mrs. Fury becomes effective on July 1st, uh, at the uh, termination of this town meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fiore. So if you have any wood or bark discrepancies, you can't call Elsie until July 2nd. <clears throat> now, Mr. McCabe, we do have the annual report of the town. It's in the back of the hall. There's a box of a few hundred back there for your information. Okay, that closes Article 4. Now it brings us to Article 5. Ele election of Assistant Town Meeting Moderator. Do I have any nominations? Michelle DeRocher, Precinct 19. I'd like to nominate Jim O'Connor for assistant moderator. Seconded. Do we have any other nominations? Seeing none, all in favor of Mr. O'Connor as assistant town meeting moderator, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Congratulations, Mr. O'Connor. That closes Article 5. We're now on Article 6. Zoning bylaw amendment, amend signed definitions. The ARB has reported on it. We have a recommended vote. Sir. Oh, go ahead. I, you start when you're ready, and I'll press the button. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Bruce Fitzsimmons, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, in a second, uh, I'm going to introduce Don Benjamin from the Planning Department, who will make the majority of the presentation. I just wanted to preface Don's remarks by um, giving a little bit of background on this article. This may seem like a strange article, removing five words from the definition of sign. Uh, that's in uh, section 2.01 of the zoning bylaw. Um, the genesis or origin of this article is from an attempt to uh, put a mural on the Boys and Girls Club. As some of you may know, there was a contest held at Arlington High School 
four students contributed, uh, uh, well, many more than four, but four were selected. Uh, uh, their, their work was selected for display on the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, it turns out, though, that under Article 2.01, the definition of design, particularly the words designed to attract the eye, meant that these murals would be treated as signs. And somewhat counterintuitively, uh, we, we tend to think of signs as being uh, either promotional or directional. Lo and behold, it also ensnared this bit of uh, potential public art. So that's the, the background behind the article. Now, uh, with the permission of the moderator, I would like to turn this over to Don Benjamin in our planning department. Don has done a lot of work in uh, putting together a brief presentation and has met with many different groups in town about this article and has a wealth of information on it. Mr. Benjamin. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Don Benjamin, town planning staff. Um, I'm also here representing uh, Arlington Public Art. Yeah, you have to speak right into the mic. I'm also here representing uh, Arlington Public Art. Um, we are a creation of the Arlington Center for the Arts and uh, Vision 2020. Um, and uh, our members are also uh, members of these organizations you see listed here. Um, Bruce did a very good job of uh, outlining the issue. Um, I, this is the text of Article 2 uh, zoning bylaw definition of a sign. Uh, and the colored section is uh, what we would like to ask town meeting to allow us to uh, remove. Uh, you can notice that uh, there remains a large body of language that's very specific that continues to uh, define a sign. We wouldn't suggest any changes there. Um, can't talk about art without uh, showing some pictures. Uh, and so I just want to uh, present these images to uh, give you an idea of what we mean when we talk about public art. Um, the uh, image on the top left is, uh, ought to be familiar to everyone. Uh, we certainly think that's a wonderful example of uh, public art. Uh, on the right, uh, at, at the top, is uh, an image from a little town in uh, Missouri called Chillicothe. Uh, and they claim to be the home of sliced bread. Uh, who knew, right? Um, they uh, have about uh, 20 murals in their downtown. And uh, these murals are historic in nature, and they essentially tell the history of the town in images. We think that uh, sort of thing is a wonderful idea. I've uh, talked to the uh, director of this program, uh, Crystal Narr. Uh, she says uh, in the dozen or so years that they've uh, run this program, they have not had a problem with graffiti. She also mentioned that uh, nobody has attempted to drive down one of these false streets. Uh, so if we do that sort of thing, uh, we wouldn't have that to worry about, I think. Uh, the image at the uh, lower right is the one that uh, Bruce is uh, talking about. Uh, this is a, a mock-up of uh, what's called a scrim. Uh, it's a large piece of cloth onto which uh, images are uh, projected. Um, and these images were uh, their specific uh, um, uh, photographs of the images, students uh, that were part of a student competition that was organized by Dave Ardito at the high school. And um, these are the, uh, the winning entries. Uh, we thought it would be a wonderful idea, especially since it's a boys and girls club, uh, to display student artwork uh, in this sort of way. This would be the uh, spy pond facing uh, side, that big blue wall that measures about 100 feet wide and 25 feet tall. Uh, and this other image uh, on the lower left is uh, one of those uh, junction boxes you see all over every town you go in. Uh, and only this one uh, simply has a uh, sort of a, a lovely image on it. Um, they're doing this in Somerville, they do this in uh, Maynard, all over the country really. Uh, it's not clear whether uh, the uh, wording that we spoke of uh, really ensnares uh, 3D art, but it certainly is designed to attract the eye. Um, and uh, these images on the left are from uh, Summer Bee's Landing in Newburyport. Uh, it's uh, sort of an open air gallery. Uh, we think these are, are wonderful examples of uh, sculpture. Uh, the sculpture in the town garden uh, reminds us uh, that, um, you know, what a, how important art is in creating a, a special place for a town. Uh, also, that we really have a heritage to build on uh, here in Arlington. Um, and the, uh, the one on the lower right is uh, sort of a whimsical image uh, from Portland, Oregon, uh, just there to uh, indicate that you can have fun with art. Uh, infrastructure presents a lot of uh, possibilities uh, for art. Um, 
bike racks, benches, uh, dance steps set into the, uh, the uh, sidewalk. It's the consensus of our group that you can never go wrong with dance steps set in the sidewalk. Uh, and manhole covers, believe it or not, can be uh, absolutely wonderful. Um, we've had a, a business owner already, I've, I've been giving a presentation like this uh, all over town uh, for the past year, and uh, we had a business owner come forward and, and say that they would love to do this sort of thing in town. Um, we think this can be a real good thing for Arlington, and we hope that you'll let us remove just that little bit of language uh, so that we can go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Berkowitz. Thanks, Mr. Moderator. Bill Berkowitz, Precinct 8. I rise in favor of the recommended vote. I think it's noteworthy that this particular article was backed not only by the ARB, but also by property owners and Vision 2020, as well as arts groups in town. I think the special merit of this article goes beyond a small change in bylaw wording, which makes it easier to display public art in town, <clears throat> but it also has potential economic value to us as a community. Uh, we've talked about bringing outsiders into Arlington uh, through tourism or a proposed uh, monotony village or other means. Uh, art does that. Uh, I work in Lowell uh, where there's been quite an astonishing, quite an astonishing uh, revival of the arts, um, uh, and which has boosted the economy and drawn many artists to town. If you get a chance, you can go visit, uh, just for example, Western Avenue Studios on the first Saturday of the month just to see for yourself as a taste of that. I think we have the opportunity to uh, encourage <clears throat> the same thing here, that same visibility, uh, even if it's in a smaller way. About 20 years ago, <clears throat> here in town, we relaxed uh, liquor regulations, uh, bringing uh, many more new restaurants into town, waves of uh, new visitors to Arlington uh, here for nourishment of the uh, body. Uh, now, 20 years later, <clears throat> Uh, we have a similar opportunity <clears throat> uh, leading to more public art and bringing uh, new waves of people here into Arlington for uh, nourishment of the spirit. I hope that we support this article. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Judd. display on the screen had four images and I was told that the one in the upper left we'd easily recognize. Sorry, I'm one of the people that didn't recognize it and I asked a few others if they did. So I don't know if you can show that again or at least explain what it is. And also I'm very disappointed that the Uncle Sam statue was not included in the art display. Are you looking for an answer for something? Can you give him an answer to his question, what the lower Basically, right image was in one Benjamin, of the split plays? Uh, town planning department. That was the uh, mural in the Heights um, on the uh, MBTA building. Yes. <sighs> OK. I'm glad you described it, because I diff have a little difficulty seeing that. Oh. And I've recently had my vision corrected to 2015. Yeah, the, li the lights are a little bit high, uh, but yeah. Thank you very much. And as I say, the Uncle Sam statue, I think, needs a little bit of uh, promotion, too. We do have a lot of very fine representations of good, fine art, whether it's Cyrus Dallin, Theodore Barbarossa, or any of the others, our town hall, our library. And I think that it is very worthwhile to try to promote this image and some of these good things to the rest of the local population and maybe even further away. Thank you. Ms. Costa. Uh, 
I have Barbara Costa, Precinct 10. I rise in support of this article. I'll be very brief. I have been working with the Arlington Public Art Committee. Um, I'm also on the board of the Arlington Center for the Arts. I've been paying attention to this all around um, in Cambridge and other areas, uh, other towns. It's uplifting, it's whimsical, it's mem it could be memorial, makes you smile, makes you think, and makes people interact, perhaps. I think it's a very exciting idea, and I hope you will all support it. Thank you. Um, sir. Uh, Bill Kaplan, Precinct 6. Um, I, I guess somebody should dissent, I guess. Um, I, uh, I'm actually, I mean, I'm art major in college. I've worked in the arts, um, but I mean, it should be pointed out that, uh, I mean, art is in the eye of the beholder. So, I mean, Starry Night is art. Piss Christ is art. It's both. It, it, it's about, it's based upon the display of public art, but it is about adding the, removing the sign so it's designed to attract the eye. But the basis of the article is art. Thank you. But, um, and that wasn't a valid point of information. Oh, so anyway, uh, I guess the, I think the, uh, the intent behind the, the zoning regulation uh, is that at once upon a time, Arlington, you know, was a garish hodgepodge of ugly signs all screaming for attention. And, um, and somebody years ago decided that was ugly and it might look nicer if everything was a little bit neater. And uh, I would point out that, I mean, if art, I mean, again, some people will like it and some people won't. Um, you can have two pieces of art that, that clash horribly. Um, I mean, it, 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 I guess, you know, we're all in favor of art, I think. I am, uh, like I said, I, I mean, it's been part of my career. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, that we want to have art, you know, on every flat surface in town, which I guess theoretically we could. Um, a few years ago, we, you know, uh, we, we passed a regulation to, uh, to get rid of graffiti. And, uh, you know, building owners are fined if they have graffiti on their walls. Um, there's not that big a difference between graffiti and art. Again, it's, it's in the eye of the beholder. So um, just as we embrace art, we should also remember that uh, willy-nilly art, you know, can get kind of ugly. Uh, and so perhaps we should remember what the original intent of the zoning bylaw was, which is to keep the city or the town from, you know, looking like a big hodgepodge of clashing whatever. Uh, anyway, th thanks. Uh, point of information, Mr. Fitzmorris, this will still require a permit of some sort if you want to put art on something, when I'm not just going to be able to paint my house with a big picture of art, am I? Sure. This will still require a permit, correct, Mr. Benjamin? We do not anticipate that this uh, would uh, require a permit from uh, the town. Um, as a, uh, a group uh, working under the Arlington Center for the Arts and Arling Vision 2020, uh, we would collaborate on creating art. That's how we see this arrangement. Uh, art has not been regulated. Um, permit, yes or no? Uh, no. They're not going to have to get a permit to put one of these. You would certainly need box. permission from the uh, the owner to be able to do that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. That's Mr. Schlickman. Paul Schlickman, Precinct Nine. Motion to terminate debate under all items under this article. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate under this article and all motions. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. no. My opinion is a two-third vote. Um, we have before us a recommended vote of the Redevelopment Board. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. My opinion is a two-third vote, and I so declare a two-third majority. Ms. Re Lucarelli, do you certify that there are 85 members present and voting? Yes. It's a positive vote. We have now before us Article 7. All right, Mr. Tosti, raise for one second before we take Article 7 up. Excuse me, but in all of my introducing, I forgot to introduce a very important person, our Executive Secretary, Gloria Turco, at the end, who does all our work. Thank you.
is a point of information for the new town meeting members. I call the article, the proponent gets to get up and give their 10 minute spiel, and then you as town meeting members get to speak. If you wanna speak, raise your hand um, when the article's called. I keep a list, I call the people as we see fit off the list, generally in the same order as we see the hands go up. So if you wanna talk, get your hand up. And if you want to, you hear Mr. Schlickman terminate debate, if you want to terminate debate, you have to get up and say just those words like he did. I move to terminate debate under the article and all motions before it. You can't say anything else. So that's your five minutes, two minutes of introduction. Article seven, Mr. Greeley. Uh, Kevin Greeley, Board of Selectmen. Uh, Mr. Moderator, may I ask you a question? This is the first time I've heard you say that you may or may not follow the names on the list in the order in which you receive them. What other criteria do you use to determine who may speak on an article? If someone raises their hand every single time, I want to hear from someone else. Oh, well then God bless you, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> okay, article seven. Got you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Carol Kowalski, Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, town meeting members, uh, I'd like to ask you to bear in mind five main points as you consider Article 7. Right now in our zoning bylaw, land zoned for business can be converted to residential use by right if it's for a single family home or a duplex or by special permit if it's residential use of higher density. The second point I'd like you to bear in mind is that mixed use, the combination of residential and business use in the same building, currently exists in Arlington, but it's almost impossible to do today. A third point I'd like you to bear in mind is that only about 4% of our tax base is business based right now. The warrant article and the amendment that's proposed would create incentives only for developments where business and residential use are mixed in the same building. These incentives would not be available to business only and they would not be available to residential only developments. And the fifth point I'd like you to bear in mind is that these incentives would be subject to a special permit and the environmental design review standards currently in the zoning bylaw. I'm gonna get the clicker, excuse me. There are many examples of mixed use in Arlington where upper floors have a residential use and lower floors have a business use. You see it in Arlington Heights. You see it in Arlington Center. Here's wooden strings. These are all the B3 village business district zone. And you see it in East Arlington. It's very difficult to do mixed use under today's zoning regulations because the on-site parking, yard setbacks, and other dimensional requirements for both the residential use plus the business use must be met. This map shows all of the business zoned land in Arlington today. As I said, Arlington's business tax base is about 4%. 
Some of the land zoned for business has been converted to apartments, reducing the amount of available land for business use. Business zoned land, as I said, can be converted to residential use by right and by special permit. This site, I'm sure a lot of you recognize, I hope you do. Um, this is at the corner of Mill Street and Mass Ave. Uh, this is in the B2A, major business zoning district. It was converted by right to townhouses in the 1990s. And this site is the former Brigham's Ice Cream headquarters, also in the B2A major business zoning district. It was converted to residential apartments by special permit in 2010. Well-designed residential development is good, but a trend toward less business zoned land makes it harder to recruit new business to Arlington and harder for existing businesses to grow and continues the unbalanced burden on Arlington's residential taxpayers. An example is this map which shows all of the land in Arlington that's zoned for B2A major business district. That's one of our business districts. It shows that district in red. It's not a lot. This map shows the impact of those two recent residential developments on this business zoned district. We've effectively lost about 25% of the land in this particular business district that could have been available to recruit new business to Arlington. That land is likely to stay in residential use for decades. Can we do mixed use today? It's questionable because you've got the parking requirements for both uses combined with the setback requirements for both uses, plus the open space requirements for both the residential and the business uses. And there's also some question about whether one would have to be a primary use and one might have to be an accessory use. And, and how do you make that judgment call? It effectively renders this type of development, which I think you all recognize as being characteristic of our business districts, effectively outlawed. Mixed use, the definition that's proposed for this bylaw amendment is very careful not to exclude desirable businesses found in what you might consider light industry today, such as alternative energy startups or the innovation economy or even gourmet food makers. An adjacent community after investing a lot of public funds in a facelift in one of their business districts, had a couple uh, companies approach them saying, we really want to be in this square. And they realized, to their disappointment, that they had zoned out light industry. So a high-end, growing audio speaker company couldn't locate in that square. They had to bend over backwards to try to go around their own recent zoning out of light industry. I don't think we want to do that. This bylaw amendment would be subject to a special permit and environmental design review. Environmental design review has 12 standards that have to be met and reviewed by the Arlington Redevelopment Board. I bring your attention specifically to landscape preservation, building and environment, open space, and the third from the bottom, heritage. These all would be imposed as they are already in the zoning bylaw for environmental design review special permits. These would be imposed on mixed use development proposals. The redevelopment board concluded that allowing mixed use does not need to come at the expense of any current use allowed in the bylaw. The proposed vote would not remove any rights currently available. The proposed vote adds an option not readily available today. The dimensional requirements do favor mixed use over conversion to a single use to create an incentive to keep business uses in business districts.
the mixed use dimensional requirements would be the same as those that are currently imposed on business use for minimum lot size, frontage requirements, front and side yard setbacks, and maximum lot coverage. You have about a minute and a half left, Carol. Thank you. The mixed use density does create a higher floor area ratio. That's basically the ratio of the building volume to the land area on the lot. But that additional floor area ratio is controlled by the requirement to have on-site parking. It's also controlled, as I said, by the Environmental Design Review Special Permit, and it's only available when business is paired with residential development. The parking requirements would be one per dwelling unit, which is quite common today for multifamily developments, and would be one space per 750 square feet of business use. To give you a frame of reference for how much that is, 12 Medford Street is about 750 square feet. That's the building where there were the public art displays in the window over the winter. Other parking lot requirements would apply. The zoning bylaw currently says that for parking lots of five spaces or more, we have to have screening, fencing, and parking setbacks. So to, to wrap up, I want to review the five points are that this is intended to keep business uses in our business districts. Mixed use already exists in Arlington, as you can see here. It would be subject to special permit and environmental design review standards. It's, these incentives are only for mixed use. And I know that the Redevelopment Board appreciates your consideration. I'd be happy to address questions. Thank you. Mr. Loretti. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Chris Loretti, Precinct 7. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I would like to ignore the advice of your Mr. Daugherty and ask town meeting for three additional minutes. The speaker has asked for three additional minutes, making it 13 minutes. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. Huh. I don't think they gave it to you, Chris. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Could you reset? I will reset your clock, though. Thank there you. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 7, I would submit, is perhaps the most significant zoning bylaw change um, to the business district since the modern zoning bylaw came into effect in 1975. So I hope that town meeting gives it very careful consideration and understands very well exactly what it's voting on. I want to begin by saying I support mixed use and I support the preservation of business uses, but I don't believe Article 7 does that. What it does is it promotes very high density residential development in a minimal amount of business use. Uh, Mr. Good, could you put up the first slide? Thank you. Um, I'm going to come back to this, but I want to use this slide as a backdrop for a few minutes as I speak. This is a B2 district. The changes I'm going to talk about right now would apply in this district. This is called the Neighborhood Business District. Um, the problem I have with this bylaw is that it ignores the distinctions that have traditionally existed within Arlington zoning bylaw. The way our bylaw works is that the number of the district indicates the intensity of use. So you go from R0 to R7 for the residential districts, with R7 being the high density apartment district. In the business district, you go from B1, uh, which is the neighborhood office district, to B5, the central business district. This bylaw change will apply to all of those business districts except B1. What it does is it applies the residential density standards for high density apartments to all of those business districts to which it applies. That is something that has never occurred before. And contrary to what Ms. Uh, Ms. Kowalski said, it in fact it increases the density beyond what, it, what is allowed for commercial construction in many of those business districts. It also confuses the distinction of uses among the various business, 
business districts. Right now, the only place you can have light industry in Arlington is in the industrial district. And light industry includes things like machine shops, includes things like um, auto body repair shops. The way that um, mixed use is defined, and then you should look at the definition in the proposed vote, not the definition that was shown on the screen because they're very different. It includes light industry uh, among, with, the, uh, with the other uses that are allowed in, in the business zoning districts. Uh, I think a lot of those uses are ones that people would feel are inappropriate and should not be allowed. But I would like to show um, exactly what the effect of this change would be using the example of the Brigham's development. So Mr. Good, if you could switch to the other PowerPoint presentation. And while he's doing that, what, what I'm going, what's going to come up in a moment is a plan of the Brigham's development. And the area that's shown in pink is the area designated for open space at this development. I'd like to put myself in the position of the developer of this site and show you what I'm going to do uh, if you pass this zoning bylaw. I think most of you have probably seen what the development looks like now. Now, I'm going to convert it to a mixed use, and here's what I'm going to do to do that. The gray building on the right-hand side of this figure is indeed a commercial or business use. And what I'm going to do is just put a few apartments above that, and that is going to qualify me for mixed use. Remember, to qualify for mixed use, all that you have to do is get most of the frontage of the building on the first floor used for business use, and that's all. You do not have to have the entire first floor occupied. You only have to have most of the frontage of the first floor occupied. So by doing that, I've got a mixed-use development. And now that I have a mixed-use development, you have made things terrific for me as a developer. I no longer have to get a variance for this development because I meet the frontage requirements. It used to be 100, or it would be 100 if, if under the existing bylaw. Now it's reduced to 50. So I want to thank you very much for uh, eliminating that requirement to get a variance because if any of the neighbors had appealed that variance, I would have been in big trouble. Similarly, uh, I no longer have to get a variance for the height because this change to the zoning bylaw allows the ARB to ignore the dimensional requirements as part of the special permitting process. That is an unprecedented power that right now is only reserved for churches and nonprofit educational institutions. Now, I, as I said, I'm going to put my um, retail or, or some other business use on the first floor of that small building. And while my original plan was to give you 3,500 square feet, you know, I might only give you 1,000 or 2,000 square feet because, heck, you know, I'm, I'm giving you the entire frontage as business use, and I'll make that 50 feet wide along the frontage and 20 feet deep or 30 feet deep, and you've got... You know, you've got 1,000 or you've got 1,500 square feet, and that's all of the business use I'm going to give you for this development. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is there are zero requirements for open space under this proposed change. So all that area in pink there, I can use that for buildings. I can use that for parking lots. And, and that's just great because that allows me to build far more apartments than are currently being built there. And I can... Uh, I can go from 135,000 square feet that I had been proposing to over 200,000 square feet of, of floor area. And I can go from 116, 116 units to 245 units because you have rezoned this parcel for the densest residential use allowed in Arlington. So I'm sorry if you thought you were getting more business use, but I want to thank Town Meeting for passing this change because I'll be thanking you all the way to the bank when I collect rent from over twice as many people. Now, Mr. Good, if we could quickly move back to the other slides. I want to show you what can happen with this same change in, uh, in the neighborhood business district. Okay, this is, um, as I said, a typical B2 district. I think it's kind of charming, small scale. I don't say that just because it's my neighborhood. But... Um, if you look, this is a typical district. district. It is, the height of these buildings is one story. With the proposed change that you are being asked to uh, approve, even in this district, you could go up to five stories. So let's look at the next slide, uh, Mr. Good, if we could. 
And the problem you have with this neighborhood business district, or not a problem, but th by design, these, these uh, districts are close to residential districts. And here we have, you know, this, this same, that's the same block. It's next to a two-family home. But if we go to the next, I'm sorry, no, um, the second slide of the other presentation. What does that do? Oh, is that for the, oh, I can do it? Okay, thanks. Well, suffice it to say, I'll continue talking um, while Mr. Good is trying to get the technology back. But, no, next slide, please. Great. So this is what happens, and I don't, I'm not even sure that's five stories. You can go up 50 feet. But I, what, what, another thing that's taken away by this bylaw change is something called a height buffer. And what's been institutionalized in our zoning bylaw is that when you have a large commercial or business use next to an R1 or R2 district, the height, maximum height is reduced. But this change does away with that height buffer. So if you happen to be the poor person like my neighbor who lives in that house, you can forget about watching the sunrise uh, to the east, which is where that large uh, uh, addition is being put on. Now, if we go to the next slide, I'll, I'll just give you that in, in um, um, an elevation to see what that looks like. But let's go to the next, uh, next slide. And, you know, f as uh, Ms. Kowalski said, you know, we have mixed use in Arlington, and, and I think people are happy with it. But look, is, none of the examples she gave you were for buildings that were five stories high. At most, they were three like this. And, um, you know, I think you really need to think about the, the proper height, and if we go to the next slide, I mean, I would call this mixed-use development too, but it doesn't qualify under the zoning bylaw. There's no, res there's no residential component. And if we go to the next slide, I would say this is how you do mixed-use wrong. This kind of ugly development is in North Cambridge. Um, frankly, I would not like to see another story added to this building and moved into Arlington. So finally, let me conclude by saying you know, a lot of public officials have been talking about the master planning process. Given the magnitude of the, of the changes that we're talking about, this sort of change really, be, really should come as an outgrowth of that process. It shouldn't be done on an ad, ad hoc basis beforehand. So I suggest that if, if indeed that were the case, that it went through the master planning process, we would see a a type of change to the zoning bylaw that would support mixed use in a way that people like and that the community would be far more comfortable with. So I ask you to vote no on this article and let the public process work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laredi. We're going to take our 10-minute break. Please go out and buy cookies and things from the boys of the cross team.
Seven. Seven. Please come to order. Someone um, has lost a little earring with this little, I don't know if it's a real thingy in the bottom or not. If this is somebody's, come up and get it after the meeting's over. A little gold earring thingy. I, I don't know. Stephanie's going to know if it's real. We won't embarrass them. All right, is he yours? Yep. Uh, Miss Barron has the floor. Please take your seats. Yes. Oh, you want a traveling mic? I don't know who's doing it. I know Mr. Judd standing around back there gripping the mic like it's a bottle of booze. What are you standing there holding that mic for, Mr. Judd? Give. Great, thank you. Miss, Miss Barron needs it. Thank you, Mr. Judd. I might I note that all of these aisles are much too narrow. They are. I was going to speak to Greg about it. Thank you. Sherry Barron, Precinct 7. Um, I, I just have a question for Ms. Kowalski. On the surface, I think I'm in favor of this, but I'm wondering if this is coming to us as a result of demand. I mean, you mentioned that there was a, a business in Somerville that, I think you said Somerville, that didn't come in because of, of, of a zoning issue. And, and my sense is that the, the mixed use that's, that's here now at the Capitol and the Heights and the East has probably been there for over 100 years because years ago, when you had a business on the first floor, and you didn't have a car, it made sense for you to live upstairs. So I'm just wondering if this is being done as a result, or you're, you're offering this as a result to demand. Uh, we, the redevelopment board, haven't had a developer come to it say, I want to do mixed use. We, there, there have been a couple property owners who have contemplated it, but have decided, uh, no, I, I, it can't be done, I'm not going to try. Uh, we haven't had anyone uh, come to the redevelopment board and say, uh, I want to uh, assemble parcels, and no. So the short answer is no. Um, I'm sorry, Carol Kowalski, uh, Director of Planning and Community Development. Um, excuse me, I forgot the second part of your, your question. Well, no, it was just a comment that, that, that the mixed use that exists, notwithstanding oh. the two new projects, and I don't know where else in town there would be enough space for a project like either of those. Right. So, for example, the apartments over the Capitol, I would assume they've been there for 100 years. Yes, they predate our zoning. Zoning was created, really, the trend when zoning was initially um, adopted across the country was to segregate uses. The buildings I showed were probably all put up before Arlington adopted zoning. Okay, so, so to, but to answer my question, this is not being brought forth as, as a result to someone coming knocking on the door as demand for business coming to Arlington. No, it's, it's intended to, uh, we hope, I would hope that we could recruit business to Arlington by allowing uh, an innovative way to uh, create incentives to bring business. So I would hope it would create new business opportunities in Arlington, but it's not offered in response to a specific request. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barron. Thank you, Ms. Kowalski. Um, Linda Foster. Yep, Adam Foster. Adam, sorry, Adam. Foster. It's 
first night. I can't remember everybody's name right off the bat. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I had a lot of time. I'm from Precinct 3. Uh, and this is obviously a very complex piece of legislation. Um, but, uh, a and I don't feel that I, you know, fully understand every detail. But uh, I wanted to sort of generally say that uh, uh, this seems very much the, the best way for Arlington to grow. And that uh, just sort of keeping an eye on the big picture, uh, we should think about are there really any better uh, alternatives? Where would we want stuff to go um, that would be better than, you know, along the main business corridors in town? Um, density is always tricky, but in this case, you know, if if we really want those great stores, uh, the little cheese shop, the stuff that people that I talk to fantasize about whenever there's a vacancy and people on the Ellington set list say, oh, I'd like to see this and that, there's got to be more density to support it. People in East Arlington have been hearing a lot lately about vibrant streetscape and that whole sort of sexy idea, and it's a very appealing idea. Uh, people who, kn who have talked to me know that I don't think we will get it uh, just on the basis of redesigning a road. There needs to be more density. So the question is um, how to do that, and I think that generally this is a good way uh, to do that, and I'd like to support the approach that this is where our growth ought to happen, at least for the medium and maybe the long term. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jameson. Uh, thank, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. Um, by way of introduction, uh, we heard several times in the, in the introductory remarks by various people uh, about growth. Um, there are some members of this body, and I'm sure some residents out there, that don't want any growth to happen in Arlington. The problem is we, have a, we don't have a, a physically sustainable long-term situation. We have what's called the structural deficit. Many of us have heard of that. I'm sure Mr. Um, Toski and his FinCon members could elaborate on that at greater, at greater length for you. So the, the, uh, the opposition, to the, so you have growth on one side and we have the overrides on the other, okay? It's not just a, a growth or no growth question. It's a, que it's a question of a balance between those two. And so I'm in favor of growth in town, and I'm in favor of smart growth that I know uh, Ms. Rowe talked about a lot when she first uh, joined the board. And I hope that this type of, of uh, measure that I hope we will pass tonight will drive demand along our business corridors so we can have growth and become a, a approach uh, financial stability long term without having to do overrides. So as I mentioned, I rise in favor. And cutting to the chase uh, in response to a previous speaker's comments, could I have the picture of the yellow building up, please, with the extension uh, to the zenith? Might take a second. Yeah. You want to keep going. So um, my question to, the, uh, to whoever the moderator wishes to direct it, probably someone over on his left, is um, the impression I got from the previous speaker's presentation was that you could build the yellow monstrosity on the right by right. And uh, just by passing this, we would provide someone with the ability to build that. Um, is that the case, that they could build that by right? Mr. Fitzsimmons? Thank you, Mr. Oh, introduce yourself. You go ahead. Bruce Fitzsimmons, chair of the ARB. Uh, the short answer to Mr. Jameson's question is no. Um, what's really important to remember about this article that in every instance, mixed use can only be allowed by special permit with EDR, Environmental Design Review. Um, previously, Carol Kowalski showed you a slide with the 12 criteria that we follow for EDR, and I won't read all of them, but the one that's most uh, directly to Mr. Jameson's point is uh, item number two, relation of buildings to environment. 
which requires that the proposed development shall be related harmoniously to the terrain and to the use scale and architecture of existing buildings in the vicinity that have functional or visual relationship to the proposed buildings. I'm going to go out on a limb and predict that none of my colleagues would find that that yellow monstrosity it matches harmoniously to the building next door. Ms. Mr. Monterey, if, if I may have a follow-up? Yes, so you still have time. Okay, um, and that beyond that uh, aesthetic, if I will, if I may, uh, parameter, that the size of the building would also be driven by the, um, so let me back up. One of the advantages that were presented uh, about adopting this article is that we don't have to meet the parking for the residential and the parking for the business as a sum Okay, but if I understand correctly, there, there still will be parameters uh, upon which the parking will drive the, the volume capacity of the building. So if there were three spots behind this building, there's no way you could build a five-story monstrosity. Well, that's correct because you would have, uh, if you need one parking space for each 750 square feet of commercial development and one parking space per residential dwelling, you wouldn't have enough parking on, on site uh, to make that uh, building qualify. So, so is it my conclusion that this uh, representation is, uh, falsely represents what we're voting on tonight, and I strongly urge passage of this measure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Doherty, James. as the chairman just outlined for all the business districts with the exception of B1. Now certainly from my standpoint, um, one could construe the comment as self-serving, but I think it's far greater than that. Um, there's a patchwork as it was shown on the zoning map um, going up and down Mass Ave, whole patchwork of different B1, uh, different B districts. And in those districts, a lot of them are but to try to drive the development that I think we, um, we all want, which is, which is good to control development in the town, um, the only way you're going to achieve that, and to the point I think the previous speaker was pointing out, a lot of these parcels are too small to create any, any of this smart growth. So you have to assemble parcels, and um, I think the board clearly must have thought some of that through when, when they put this forward. Um, but what I would like to do is amend the article by simply striking the one sentence that excludes B1 and leaving that in there as well. So for example, if someone wanted to buy my property, either one of the gas stations on either side, or someone wanted to buy all three of those parcels, and mine is not the only example, there's numerous examples of this that are in these various districts, they would be allowed to do this. Because theoretically, going back to that previous um, slide, on two sides of my property, one could basically build not that monstrosity that I don't think anyone um, could see being built, nor do I think a board would approve that. But clearly, it would inhibit the goal of this article, which would be to be able to assemble various properties so that you could come out with some type of decent development. The only other comment that I want to make and I speak as myself, although I'm the chairman of the Board of Assessors, um, and I'm very well versed in, in taxation and in income producing properties, is the town should not be driven to zoning based on the, the idea that we are going to be able to create enough commercial or industrial density in this community to have classification. I will go out, uh, as the prior chairman mentioned, uh, his board, but I would suggest to you that it would be impossible for us if we rezoned a large majority of this community, commercial industrial property, to ever get a mix that will give us substantial base on commercial 
to have a classified tax rate in this town. It just won't happen. The other thing, when we point out the old Time Oldsmobile site, which is the site uh, that was shown across in the Jason Russell House, a lot of us who were here back then, a CVS was going to go in there or a Walgreens or something to that effect. We actually rezoned all the large um, automotive sites because we didn't want to see any of those dealerships and, and um, gas station or automotive uses. That site over there was developed that way for a whole host of, 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 of reasons why it came about. Similarly, at the corner of Mill Street and Summer Street, you have another residential development, which was the old Stevens Foundry. If you look at any of those in terms of what they were valued and what they contributed in tax dollars to this community as commercial properties, as opposed to what they contribute now in property tax, they're multiples what they contribute. And what I would argue is that in both of those instances, and I think there's many more, the old Texaco station in East Arlington, which was a very nice development that was done, not a lot of those units add to the overall cost of this community. I don't believe, I don't have the facts here, but I think people um, could probably rationalize. You do not have a lot of children living in any of those three complexes. So although I, like a lot of residential people, would love to see a commercial tax rate like in Burlington or Lexington or these other communities that along the 128 belt, it's never gonna happen here. So I do support this, but I support it simply from a growth standpoint and smart development versus as a goal to try to get revenue. The fact of the matter is that residential on a price per square foot brings in more res revenue in this town than commercial space does. Thank you. Did you want to put a motion forward? If so, you have to do it in writing. Okay, I didn't know. I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator. I yep. thought for a simple change like that, we could just, we could just no, you just the one line, but well, if you just put it in writing, then we'll get it seconded. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, Ms. LaCourte. Teen. Um, I also have a question, Mr. Moderator, through you to um, Ms. Kowalski. Yes, um, go ahead, ma'am. And my question is, okay, I gotta <laughs> reorganize myself here because um, I, Gordon already asked the first question that I had. Um, so, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Um, the, the question is about the other parcel that Chris talked about, the, the um, Brigham's development, and whether or not um, it would be likely that we would ever allow someone to define as mixed use a parcel on which the majority of what they were building was residential and only a small part was commercial. How are you envisioning using this? And then the follow-up question is about the relationship of this change to master planning. Go ahead, Ms. Kowalski. I'll address, the, I'm Carol Kowalski, Director of Planning and Community Development. I'll address the first part, and I think the chairman uh, is going to address the second part of your question. Um, one thing you have to bear in mind with the um, Brigham's parcel, on the parking, you would still have to have the parking setbacks, the parking uh, screening, and the, uh, the um, there are landscaping requirements for parking lots of certain sizes. Those would all still have to apply to uh, the Brigham site. Um, and I'll let the chairman address the second part of your question. Thank you. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Bruce Fitzsimmons, chair of the ARB. Um, with respect to the master plan, uh, that's a significant undertaking. Um, it probably takes about two years to go through the process of putting a master plan together. Uh, involves community outreach. It involves bringing people together to talk about various things that are important to them. Um, it will in inevitably result in some zoning articles, um, but we're probably not looking at having action on those zoning articles before a town meeting for probably three years. And in that time frame, development pressures on these sites will continue to take place. The clock's not going to stop ticking in the development community on these projects. Well, 
we, they wait for the master plan to come into place. So yes, it would be great to have this as part of the master plan discussion, but there's no reason why we couldn't have an incremental step and put this into place now and then come back and incorporate it into the master plan. And given that there's no actual projects planned at the moment that would use mixed use, what you're suggesting, I think, is that this would be a tool that we would have in our toolbox when we see what kind of development we want to encourage under the master plan. So in other words, we would have control of this because of special permit and, and EDR. That's correct. And you know, I, okay. I think the fact that we're not seeing a lot of desire mm -hmm. to uh, put up mixed use projects is because it's simply too hard to do so under the okay. current zoning code, where you have to meet both the residential requirement and the business uh, or commercial requirement. Uh -huh. So another tool in the toolbox that can be used to help uh, developers, uh, to encourage developers to um, try mixed use, okay. I think would be beneficial. All right. So let me ask you another question then about special permit and EDR. The um, CVS that was built next to the high wait, school. Wait, wait. At um, tie it into the article. I mean, yeah, it, it does tie okay. to the article. Trust okay. me. So what we're saying is that special permit EDR for mixed-use development protects us from the kind of things that Ms. Loretti, Mr. Loretti is saying would be a danger that we would risk. My recollection when we did the CVS development was that there were things that we did not feel like we could require of that property develop, e developer even though we were under special permit. Can you walk me back through that process and reassure me that I'm recalling this correct, incorrectly or something? Sure. Uh, the <laughs> CVS um, property uh, started off with a much different design than what you see now. Uh -huh. uh, at one point, uh, the store was going to be significantly set back uh -huh. from Mass Ave. There was going to be a parking lot in the front yard. Uh -huh. We were going to have a large pylon sign that might be more appropriate for uh -huh. a shopping center along uh -huh. the freeway as opposed to uh, uh -huh. on Mass Ave. So uh, I know that there are critics of, of the CVS store. But I think if you were to start with what was originally presented to the board, you'll see that it was significantly scaled back. Um, we go through a pretty rigorous design review process. Uh, we're very fortunate to have an architect and a landscape architect on the board. Uh, we look at things like traffic circulation, um, drainage, uh, utilities to the site. Uh, it's really a pretty thorough process. And um, I, I think it's going to uh, take out the undesirable elements that uh, you would see. I, I think the, the the comments that were suggested about all the horrendous things that could happen with this article gave the impression that developers would be able to do this as of right. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case at all. It's all through the EDR process. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. So really briefly here, I want to follow up on what Jim Doherty was saying about tax base because I agree with him that we shouldn't be making this change under the assumption that somehow we're going to get tax property classification. But I do think that you should be considering this as a method for doing two things. The first of all is to provide us with control of development along the Mass Ave corridor on many parcels and on our other business corridors that would allow us to create pleasing development along the lines of the Capitol Square building, which I absolutely love, which we cannot do right now. Any construction that is new that you would assemble parcels for in those business districts right now would have to be either completely residential or completely commercial. And Jim's right. We get a lot of more, a lot more tax um, revenue, thank you, <laughs> out of residential use as opposed to commercial use. The great thing about the ability to build mixed use would be that we would get the advantage of a more lively streetscape, expansion of business property in town for all the other things that it brings us, more of a sense that we have a community that isn't just a bedroom community, more ability for us to buy the things we want to buy in town, less having to travel outside of town, and at the same time get the tax advantage and the business property owner gets the advantage of multiple ways of earning income that would be provided by the residential uses that could be above the business properties. So I think if you concentrate on what the Capitol Theater building looks like and those, that store block as something that we can't do in future development, but this would allow us to do in future development with the understanding that special permit 
and EDR gives us a lot of control. We, we, in other words, don't have to allow someone who wants to build a mixed-use development that we hate to actually build a mixed-use development. There is a, no as of right to do so. That um, this is actually pretty smart change. I know we tend to be a little bit conservative about zoning changes, but I think particularly knowing how long it's going to take us to do a master plan, if we don't have this tool in our toolbox now and we decide we want it later, we don't know what development could happen in the meantime that we might not like or what opportunities we might miss. So I'm in support of this and I strongly encourage you to be so as well. Thank you. Um, Mr. Fitzsimmons, you were next to wish to speak. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Bruce Fitzsimmons. Uh, one very quick point. It's been brought to my attention that um, in Section 7 under the proposed vote, uh, it says that amending Section 5.04 by adding a new use number 1.14 mixed use and by adding SP for special permit under the columns B1, B2, B2A, B3, B4, B5 is erroneous in that we were not going to add it under the B1 district. The table that you see that follows is correct under the bylaw, I'm sorry, under the warrant article, but the uh, text in section seven is incorrect uh, by listing B1. Of course, Mr. Doherty will now amend that to add it back in. So if I may, you want to administratively strike out B1. Is that what Mr. Doherty's amendment is trying to do? Uh, no. Puts it back in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll deal with it when we vote. Um, Ms. Fiore? I got you, Ted. Mrs. Fiore? Uh, when I first became a town meeting member, these zoning articles never came up in the beginning like they have over these past few years. I think it's unfair to new town meeting members, never mind those of us who've been around for a while, to have these all put before us um, so quickly, but nevertheless, they're here. Uh, I'm uh, only not speaking to the article as much as the effects. Uh, one of the things I do, because I live in East Arlington, uh, I'm very close to the people in Cambridge, and I go to meetings of the North Cambridge Stabilization Committee, which is fighting to preserve some kind of decent life in North Cambridge. And uh, the same developer has, uh, the same project manager is in charge of most of those developments that are now have covered what we had hoped over the years to have a nice uh, open space for wildlife and so forth. But besides that, uh, this makes me worry because all of the building that's gone down there was permitted eight years ago. So what happens is that uh, businesses come along, they get a permit, but then they don't build, and then the person who may buy their property does something entirely different. You never know what's going to happen. So I'm a little bit concerned about this permitting business ahead of time. I personally don't think it's a good idea. I might add that I was even offered a couple of plane tickets to go to California so I wouldn't have to listen to the pile driving on Route 2. They forgot that what I really am concerned about, and the same thing here, is traffic. I haven't heard anything about traffic. Not the soil conditions so much here, but I hear nothing about them over there. So. The citizens don't get their questions answered when the permitting is done years ahead of time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fiore. Um, Andy O'Brien. Thanks, Jim. Uh, thank you, Andy O'Brien, uh, Precinct 16. Um, th this. Uh, 
This warrant, um, I don't know a lot about, but from what I've been, I've been, from what I've been hearing, sounds like a pretty good thing. Um, I think it's important that we have a chance to work in the town that we live in, and there are a few opportunities to do that. Um, but I guess my question is, is this a Trojan horse to bring in more housing into Arlington, or is this indeed something that will bring more business in? Is that a rhetorical question or a real question? Oh, it's a re well, it's a real question. I'd like to hear what they have to say. Ms. Um, Kowalski? Yes. Yes. Residential is, there's a lot of pressure in the market right now for residential development. We're going to continue to see that pressure. Whether we, uh, whether town meeting decides to approve this bylaw amendment or not, we'll continue to see that. This way, though, it's intended that we at least keep, we have a way of trying to keep some business use when someone comes to the redevelopment board to convert business use to residential. That's the short answer. Okay. Thank you. No, that's it. Okay. Mr. Streifeld? Mark? Mr. Jones, Alan? Alan Jones, Precinct 14. Uh, and in my uh, day job, my wife and I run a very small high-tech, very small high-tech company, uh, but I've been for a long time a real booster of any sort of uh, entrepreneurial, innovative efforts. Uh, I'd, I'd love to see more of that in, in Arlington. Um, I'd love to see Arlington be the home of the next HubSpot or Rail Runner uh, or VisiCalc. Um, and, and it seems to me that this article, uh, the, the, this change, <laughs> you recognize that, the old timers, uh, that, that this sort of change might um, allow development that'd be more attractive to uh, smaller, innovative, uh, fast-growing companies. Um, and uh, Ms. Kowalski did confirm that there weren't any particular developers uh, uh, around, waiting around the corner for this to happen. So I, I have to think that uh, the planning department probably does have some ideas for uh, economic development activities that uh, would work better if this change uh, takes place. So, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to uh, find out if, if there are any uh, plans or even thoughts about how uh, we might take advantage of this change uh, through economic development, uh, should we pass this? Ms. Kowalski, can you address that question? Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Carol Kowalski, Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, we are pretty close to filling the economic development coordinator position that town meeting approved last year. Uh, I'm very excited about that and uh, we will be able to then move forward with uh, the economic development component of the master plan. We will also look forward to getting the final report from the economic development self-assessment tool which is being conducted by the Dukakis Center for regional policy at Northeastern. Uh, they worked with us to survey business owners and business landlords in Arlington to create a SWOT analysis, uh, our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for economic development. So with that information, we will then work with entrepreneurs in Arlington, entrepreneurs and technology people in Arlington to try to attract and create opportunities for Arlington residents to work here, to create business incubators here, to try to attract the kind of employment opportunities and business opportunities that this community are, are well matched with. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Jones. And, and if I would ask, um, maybe it's not obvious, but if, if uh, somebody from planning could connect the dots on how this change might promote that sort of uh, entrepreneurial activity. Yeah, if, if we can, from here on, I'll keep our questions kind of narrowly focused towards the article as opposed to the wonderful things we're going to do in the future. 
But it, it, they relate to this article, yeah. Carol Kowalski, Director of Planning and Community Development. Lead in. This type of mixed use, will cr the incentives are intended to promote, to actually promote redevelopment of underutilized lots, to create the kind of economic development opportunities and business opportunities that look like Arlington, that look like the kind of places where people, with, uh, people in Arlington with, with the skills that this community has can stay in Arlington to create their uh, new company or to uh, work together with peers on new enterprises. So it's, it's a way of trying to add just enough so that the market will respond to redeveloping underutilized sites so that we can work with Arlington people to get that, those opportunities realized in the business component of, of these mixed use developments. Thank you. Is that all, Mr. Jones? Yes, thank you. Mr. Rierig? Uh, Brian Rierig, Precinct 8. Um, I rise in support of the Redevelopment Board's motion on this article. And I, I think we're, we're coming to understand, or I'm coming to understand anyway, that um, the specter of the, the very sort of obnoxious um, hypothetical that, that we saw earlier um, is, is really an impossibility um, under this article given the parking requirements and the requirements of environmental design review. Um, but I think uh, I am um, sensing some uh, members being troubled by the idea that the, the height requirement, or the height limitation uh, in this proposed zone would be 50 feet. And while, while I think it's clear that, uh, that how that um, height availability would get used is the subject of environmental design review, nonetheless the fact that it's there and the fact that something could be 50 feet tall I think is troubling to a lot of people. So I'm wondering, uh, Mr. Moderator, if we could get some, some input on why a 50 feet was established as a maximum height in this proposed revision how it compares to what's available to a developer under the existing zoning and, and why the proponents thought it was necessary to go to 50 feet um, as an incentive here. Ms. Kowalski, 50 feet? 50 feet was chosen in part because retail usually requires a greater height than residential. So you need to provide that on the first floor if that's where the business use is going to go. You also need to provide a certain amount of density to make the project worth doing for a developer. Um, if you, m the information I have from uh, mixed use developers in this area is that you need about three stories above retail to just, you know, to start to make it, to have the, the numbers work. So we, we didn't want to make it so, so tall, we did not want to make it so short that it, it didn't get used. I've seen mixed use developments, uh, mixed use amendments in other communities' bylaws that are so restrictive that after all the trouble of uh, approving them, they've never been used. And I, I didn't want, and I don't think the board wanted that to happen here. Can I answer your question, sir? Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Loretti for a second time. You get five minutes this time, sir. Just a few of the questions. Um, if we could put up that uh, um, sketch again that people seem to hate so much, Mr. Good, I'd appreciate it. Um, because I said absolutely nothing about parking in relation to this figure. Um, what, what I did say, or what I should have said, is that this bylaw amendment significantly reduces the amount of required parking. And since I didn't mention how many units were there, or how many square feet of commercial space might be in that building, um, there's no way to determine whether there's sufficient parking or not. Now in terms of, uh, of this being a special permit use, indeed it is, and if I said otherwise, 
uh, I was mistaken and I apologize. However, if I were to put on my de developer's hat and go before the redevelopment board and they denied me a permit to build um, you know, up to the limits specified in the dimensional requirements, I can take them to court. And I would suggest that if I'm not asking for anything special from the redevelopment board and, and I'm just building to the standards that you are passing at town meeting members, I would have a very good chance of prevailing. You know, I've sat on that, the other side of that board and I am amazed at the power that town meeting uh, ascribes to them. Believe me, it's not there. Um, the other thing, uh, other th a couple other things I would like to address is one, I don't think Ms. LaCourt got her question answered and I'm not sure Mr., um, I'm forgetting his name, the person who asked about whether this is a Trojan horse for more housing. Oh, Brian, thank you. And indeed it is, because there is no minimum amount of, house, of, of commercial required except that most of the frontage on the first floor be uh, devoted to commercial use. And that's all, that is the only requirement. That's not something the redevelopment board gets to determine. That's written into the law that you are being asked to pass. The other thing I'd like to address is the, is the claim that we cannot build mixed use right now. And I'd like to read to you from section, one sentence from section 5.02 of the bylaw. And what it says is, and, and this applies to all of the business districts. In the case of existing commercial uses, the addition or expansion of residential use within the building footprint shall not require adherence to set setback regulations for residential uses, even if the residential use becomes the principal use of the property. So I, I would question how much this change is really needed and I would question the claim that we can't build mixed use right now. Um, the other point I would like to make regards, um, regard, is regarding Mr. Doherty's comments. He would like to expand uh, this uh, bylaw change to the B1 business district. Just so you know, if I didn't say it before, B1, as you drive up and down the commercial uh, districts in town, are houses. They are structures that were built as one and two family homes that are typically used for offices. It might be doctor's offices, dentist's offices, et cetera. Um, so it would allow, again, in subject to special permit, buildings two feet high, uh, five stories high and 50 feet high, replacing what had been uh, uh, one and, and two family homes. And frankly, that was something the redevelopment board took out after the public hearing. Uh, on the article based on some comments I made. Now, uh, I see Mr. Doherty wants to put it back again. Finally, I do agree with Mr. Doherty's comment about the tax base and the um, potential for the town to get more tax revenue from residential development than business development. And again, that's really what this is about. That's why the proposed new use is listed as a residential use in the zoning bylaw, because that's what it is. Um, so again, I, I appreciate the intent, I appreciate the good ideas people would like to see for mixed use, but I don't see this, this article doing it. And one of the last points I would like to make is the commercial rents charged in town and how they change when you get a new development. Commercial rents vary tremendously from perhaps $10 to $40 per square foot. If you put in a new building, even if you use that first floor, uh, for commercial space, you are not going to be getting the quaint um, local businesses in there. You're going to tend to get the larger national chains because they can afford the higher rents. And a good example of that are the developments we've seen in Arlington Heights. If you look at um, Trader Joe's, for example, Starbucks, or in the uh, ones or across the street where we have um, Unleashed and those types of businesses, that's what you're likely to find going into these mixed uses. The other types of businesses in these startups, I, I think that's largely a pipe dream. And frankly, a lot of them, I don't care if we do get a high-end uh, speaker manufacturer, you know, I don't want them replacing Cabrera Bakery. That is not the type of business that adds to the street life. And, and I think we really need to be uh, very careful. I would ask you to vote no on Mr. Doherty's amendment, and please vote no on this article. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Deist. Motion to terminate the debate on the article and all issues there under. All in favor of terminating the debate, debate please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. My opinion is a two-third vote. Okay. We have before us the recommended vote of the Zoning Arlington Development Board 
They want us to make an administrative change to section paren 7, amending our section 5.4, et cetera, et cetera, near the end by adding SP under the columns B1, B2, B2A, B3, B4, and B5. Um, <clears throat> they tell us that B1 was inadvertently inserted there and their table of dimensional uses ver uh, verifies it uh, apparently is it. So we will make that administrative change and strike out B1. Now, Mr. Doherty has made a motion, an amendment to this that says that the proposed vote of the Arlington Redevelopment Board be amended by, in paragraph 7, adding B1 before B2. So he wants to go ahead and put back in what we just administratively changed. Do I have a second on Mr. Doherty's motion? Okay. So what we're going to vote on first is Mr. Doherty's proposed motion. And depending on how that goes, we're going to vote on the vote. Is that clear to everybody? Yeah, Mr. Judd. The amendment requires a majority vote, correct? Correct, sir. But the bylaw change requires two thirds? Right, and that's my job to keep track of that stuff. Yeah, that's well. I and I think I do. I, I just want the new town meeting members to be aware of that. Hopefully and the they've two, read town meeting time. And, uh, well, if I could afford the $25. No, wait, wait, wait. But seriously. Wait. Uh, Get I to your point. You, this isn't a continued debate. No, I'm not trying to. If this is defeated, it cannot come back for two years, or that, is it? That's correct. Correct, Mr. Fitzsimmons? Ms. Rice? If we vote this down, can they bring it back next year? Not that that has anything to do with the article. It can come back next year if the planning board, meaning the redevelopment board, were to vote positively on it again. Okay, so it's okay. not totally dead. Okay, Thank so I'll, I'm going to review what we're going to vote on. We've administratively striking the words B2 from article paren number 7. B1. Excuse me. B1 from article paren 7. Mr. Doherty has a vote that would insert that back into the recommended vote. Is that clear? Yes. All right. All in favor of Mr. Doherty's amendment, please say yes. yes. Opposed, say no. No. That is defeated. Now we have before us the recommended vote of the Arlington Redevelopment Board as printed in your reports with the B1 stricken. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. In my opinion, this is defeated. Defeated. That finishes Article 7. Brings us to Article 8. What? Yes, Mr. McCabe. Mr. Moderator, with your indulgence, uh, when I was uh, up here under Article 4, I made a gross error, and I would like to correct it. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, John uh, Fitzmaurice has been the uh, uh, mayor of Wooden Bark for many, many years. He's also been a member of this town meeting for more years than uh, most of us. And he has served in many other capacities uh, in the town boards, committees, etc. And I, I believe that uh, uh, John has done an excellent job, and he's delivered a, a, an excellent service to the people of Arlington. And I would like to suggest that the the town meeting uh, uh, thank him by a, a rising vote of thanks. And uh, if if you would please, that would be my uh, correction of my error. I forgot to uh, thank Mr. Fitzmaurice for his service. Thank you, Mr. McCabe. That's quite appropriate. And we do thank Mr. Fitzmaurice and his wife, Patricia, before him for all of their service, both of them, to the town of Arlington. That brings us to Article Number 8. It's quarter to 11. We have 15 more good minutes. We have before us a recommended vote of the Redevelopment Board. Uh, accessory apartments. Okay. 
Is the prerogative to present tonight and have us debate on Wednesday? Or should we just do it all in one night? I think so too. Yeah. Well, we go to number nine. Nine's not ready for a vote. Banners on historical sites, number 10. Accessory is going to be a lot of debate. Please give us, we're just, accessory apartments is going to take a lot of debate. I don't want to start it if we're going to adjourn, but I'm trying to think which one we could get rid of in 15 minutes. I'm looking at number 10 maybe. Excuse me, Mr. F um, Warden. I'm saying that number eight is going to take a lot of debate, and so is number nine's not ready. So maybe we're going to table them till Wednesday, and I suggest we take up number 10. Do you think 10's ready? Yes, let's. Can I get a motion to table eight and nine? So moved. So moved. All in favor of tabling eight and nine, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? No. Haha. No. Ha. That, that brings us to Article 10. Amendment, banners for historical sites. Uh, Board of Selectmen. Oh, the ARB, well, I'm sorry. ARB's yeah. recommended vote. Thank Mr. You, Moderator, I'm Andy West with the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, this article adds to the text of the general regulation, Section 703A, regarding signs. It's a clarification to the bylaw. The Economic Development and Scenic Byways Committees want to encourage tourism. That's, one of the, that's the reason at town-owned historical sites. This additional text provides confirmation that this is the type of signage that, that's allowed while not changing or expanding dimensional regulations. So this is to clarify that these signs are allowed. And I think uh, as a follow-up, um, either Juliana Rice or Mike Byrne may be able to answer questions regarding some of the specific confusions that have come up that have, that have uh, kind of required that this clarification be made. Is that it, sir? Uh, Mr. McKinney? Ready? Uh, Lawrence McKinney, uh, Precinct 7, uh, the chairman of the Youngstown Planning Committee. I rise in support of this article. Uh, if you'll notice, one of the things that we are working for is to have a sign board at the Uncle Sam Park that would a, be able to direct uh, tourists to various historic sites, the Schwamm Mill, the Jason Russell House, and so on. And uh, if there were any prohibitions or limitations on our hope to do this, I would hope that this amendment would remove them so that we can do that and place in that central location a sign or signs that would help tourists and passers-by know what was available in our town. So I rise in support of this motion, and I hope you will pass it. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Loretti? Chris Loretti, Precinct 7. Sorry for talking so much tonight. I was at the warrant article hearing, and when this article came up, um, I asked what, it, what the change actually did, because almost all the words are identical to what's already in this section of the zoning bylaw. And the redevelopment board wasn't sure because the selectmen hadn't told them. Um, I'm trying to figure out, and I'm, I'm wondering if maybe, Mr. Moderator, you can direct this question to the zoning enforcement op, um, administrator. What would be allowed if this bylaw changed that isn't already allowed? I mean, it, because the language in the article as it stands now talks about any directional or informational signage, and this bylaw change is going to allow any directional or informational signage, I guess also promotional signage, but I, and it doesn't say anything about banners, but that's what the title of the article is. So could, I, I, I think there may be some background uh, here that would be helpful to town meeting. Um, like the um, you know public artwork that wasn't allowed on the uh, on the boys and girls clubs. So I'm wondering just what couldn't be done that somebody wanted to do that they would now be able to do if this article passed. Um, 
Ms. Rice, would that be you or Ms. Kowalski? How does this change what we already have? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Juliana Rice, Town Council. Um, in my reading of the bylaw, um, the only substantive change is that um, this proposed change would add a promotional signage, which wasn't explicitly allowed under the existing bylaw. Um, and it has been, the opinion has been given in the past that uh, the type of promotional signage that um, the tourism committee wished to install for some of the town historic sites was not allowed as a zoning bylaw. That's not based on any opinion given by me or by Mr. Byrne. Um, so, but given that confusion, um, it seemed to, to make sense to clarify that that type of signage would be allowed. Um, there are also a couple of internal tensions with the zoning bylaw that uh, could provide the basis for a mistaken opinion that uh, this type of promotional signage wasn't, would not be allowed under the existing bylaw. And um, the way this change is drafted would put to rest any confusion about that point. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Ms. Loretti? Um, I'm, I'm so curious what these internal tensions are. That's when you get like heartburn, you need a gas X. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Juliana Rice, Town Council. Um, one possible internal ten tension is with Section 703M, which suggests restrictions on the placement of signs authorized for public purposes, which would be these signs um, otherwise authorized by Section 703A. A second internal tension could be um, in Section 704B, which would prohibit uh, banners to the extent they could be called wind actuated. And I don't know the exact type of um, banner that's being proposed, but some types of banners might be viewed as wind actuated. <laughs> and under uh, Section 7.11, the first indented paragraph uh, talks about restricting placement of signage on or near National Register of Historic Places buildings. And um, that tension would also be resolved by the proposed amendment. Then does this sign then essentially allow any type of signage that is um, promotional, informational, and or directional if it's put up by a government agency? By, a, by a, what kind of agency? A governmental agency. I mean, are we giving carte blanche to any type of signage related to an historical site by passing this article? Um, either Ms. Rice or Ms. Kowalski. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Juliana Rice, Town Council. Um, this proposed change would allow promotional, informational, and or directional signage placed by the town relative to historic sites within the town. Um, the bylaw currently allows traffic, directional, informational, educational, or identification signs owned and installed by a governmental agency. This uh, change would pertain only to promotional signage placed by the town. When it says town historic sites with a capital T, does that imply that the historic site has to be owned by the town of Arlington? Well, it's, it's, it's in, but if it's not in the vote, is it not outside the scope of the article? Well, answer his question while I think about scope. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Juliana Rice, Town Council. Um, no, there is nothing in this vote that would require the town to own the historic sites. The town would merely be placing the promotional signage if, in fact, um, the town, through its Board of Selectmen, um, advised by its Tourism and Economic Development Committee, determined that it was in the public interest to promote historical sites within the town. Thank you, Ms. Hunter. Uh, I think it's within scope. I think okay. the word town I'm refers to the town of Arlington as opposed to some other town. Thank you. Or the town, the word town in general. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm um, not sure whether I'll support this or not. I, I, again, I support the intention. Um, you know, frankly, I think if you look at the signage that the selectmen have put out in front of this building, um, it is not a model that I would like to see used um, anywhere in town for historic sites or elsewhere. <laughs> And I, uh, I have some reservations about, I, I think we are giving carte blanche to them 
Um, I really would like to see some real proposals for the type of signs that would be used at these historic sites. Um, I'm also curious, I guess maybe we'll get into this when we get into the financing, about the town paying for sites for nonprofit uh, uses. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. Question, if I could. Once these signs or banners or whatever are placed, who is going to maintain them? As we know, if you look around the town, we have a lot of sun-bleached signs of what used to say Battle Road, Paul Revere's Ride, that you can't even read them anymore. My question would be, who is going to maintain them? And are they going to be under a time limit of how long it will take that they have to be fixed? Mr. Chapter Lane, let's put him up for the first time. <laughs> Who's going to take care of these signs and fix all our other bleach signs? Adam Chaps Lane, town manager. There is a warrant article uh, under the finance warrant articles uh, later in town meeting that will be addressed in regards to uh, a request for funding for such signage. Uh, so presumably any, any maintenance or costs associated with purchase uh, or eventual maintenance would have to be requested, uh, requested through a warrant article process such as that. There's no town department that would currently be uh, assigned or that I would immediately suggest assessing uh, maintenance of these signs. So when these signs fade, that that's basically it. No, I, no, I the, the warrant article I, as it's posed would would be an, uh, a funding source that would have to both may, uh, provide for and then eventually maintain those signs. So I guess the, the the short answer would be the current proposal does not involve uh, a town department being assigned to to manage the uh, to manage the up the upkeep and maintenance. It would have to be considered going forward. So there is no set mechanism to replace or repair past signs or future signs? Correct. I think yeah, then why, why correct, are yeah. we bother putting up these things if they're not going to be fixed if they get broken? Well, I, I think what he's telling you is we'll address it when they fade. <laughs> More or less, right, Mr. Chapdelaine? So could you say that again, please? I said you're, you're telling him that we'll address it when these new signs fade, just as you're going to address the old faded signs this time no, around. No, well, I mean, I, the Tourism Committee would make recommendations to the board in regards to uh, when signs would need to be upgraded and maintained. Okay. But, but there is no, I, I can't say there's a financial plan before the body right now to maintain those signs. Okay. I think that's your answer, Mr. Leonard. Sounds like we need some kind of a maintenance committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Next year, Warren Article Sign Maintenance Committee. Um, Mr. Harrington. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I would like to make a motion to close debate. Well, pr name it, name sorry. it, precinct. I need to get used to this. Sean Harrington, Precinct 15. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a motion to cl close debate and move the question. Do you want to say, I want a motion to terminate debate on the yeah. article and all issues before it? Say those words. What he said. No. <laughs> You're going to learn to do this. You're going to do it. All right. Motion well, to terminate debate on the article. Motion to terminate debate. On the article. On the article. And all issues before it. And all issues before it. This is my first time. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you terminate debate. A second. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate. And it's been seconded. All in favor of termination of debate, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? All. Debate is terminated. We have. No, we're going to vote. We have before us Article 10, the recommended vote of the ARB to put up promotional signs. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. I so declare by two-third majority is a positive vote. Ms. Lucarelli, do you certify that there are 85 members present and voting in the positive? Yes. She says yes. It's a positive vote. We got a motion. What is your point of order? Now, we're not going to... Go ahead. I wish to note that all these aisles are far too narrow for that's safety. Not a, that's Next. a point of personal privilege. That's a I've already said I'll speak to Greg and have him widen the aisles before the next. Um, also, this door needs to be rehung. Okay. Motion to, uh, motion to adjourn. 
Second it. Right. Any motions for reconsideration? Notices of reconsideration. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>